Good morning to all, and today is another Monday and another blessing to every one of us. Thank God for His uh, blessing and uh, thank God for the life that He has given to us. Uh, thank God for His provision. Thank God for the good dress last night. Thank God for His so many blessings that He has uh, 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 shared to us. Thank God for all the things that uh, uh, transpired in the past week. And uh, thank God for so many things that, uh, uh, that happened, that we survived, or God protected us, God uh, saved our lives, and God, uh, you know, uh, continued to uh, sustain all of us here. And uh, we are here today because of the goodness of God. We're here today because of His love, His mercy, uh, that is new every morning. So welcome again to our morning devotion, and uh, let us start in prayer. Uh, Father God, thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for another uh, opportunity, Lord, to serve you, to work for you, to live for your glory. And Lord, I pray this morning that you cleanse our hearts, our minds, and ready us to listen to your word, and ready us, Lord, to uh, to be filled with your presence this morning and to be ministered by your word. And I pray that you will talk to us through your word. and. Uh, I pray that uh, those who are discouraged right now, encourage them, that those who are afraid, give them courage, and also those who are giving up, help them, Lord, to uh, move on and move forward. And today, as we learn from the experience of Elijah, uh, that uh, he experienced a very, very tough and uh, 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 challenging uh, times of his life, uh, uh, how to respond in the death and life situation and the crisis in his life. And today, Lord, all of us are experiencing this crisis, uh, these problems in our lives and help us how to respond and remind us, Lord, that you're the one who will minister to us in this time of pandemic. And Lord, uh, again, um, uh, be with us as we discuss your word this morning. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, good morning. And uh, our topic for today is about unexpected ways. When God, you know, do something unexpected. And sometimes in, in, in this time of crisis, in this time of pandemic, we can experience, you know, the amazing, the miraculous, the unexpect, unexpected ways of God in our lives and helping us how to cope up and helping us how to move forward and helping us how to fight for our life and how to you know to survive in this uh, very very challenging time so uh, the text is found in uh, first kings chapter 19 verses 1 to 12 and allow me to read the story you know, of uh, uh, the experience the of Elijah in as uh, he he flees for his life as he you know flight as he uh, find ways to survive in this time that he is about to be killed and is about to uh, you know uh, kill murder by Jezebel and uh, let me read verses one to verses. Uh, I think I can uh, go until 13, okay? So listen and allow, allow God to encourage us this morning in, his, uh, in, his, uh, in this passage through, through his word. Uh, Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So may the gods... Do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he, he was afraid, and he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a, a day's journey 
into the wilderness and came and sat down under, under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake, baked on hot stones in a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And an angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of the food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. There he came to, to a cave and lodged in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword, and I have been only, and I be, even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the word passed, the Lord passed by in a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke into pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And a, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire sound, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice and said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So again, this morning, let's uh, learn from the life of Elijah. I think some of us right now, probably not all, are experiencing life crisis. But this experience of Elijah, the man of God, the prophet of God, is, is more than a crisis. He, it's, it's a life in death situation. He's being pursued by a woman who wanted to kill here, to, to kill him, okay, and other you know, prophets and people of God. And he was left alone. And can you imagine, no? you're you are fighting for your life, you're looking for ways how to survive, you're finding ways to, to you know, to, 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 to hide, okay, to protect yourself, you know? and uh, and you know when you have this kind of, ex of experience, you will really be afraid. And here, let's let's observe you now what, what's what's the human responses in facing crisis, huh? I think we can learn here the, the natural ways of men when they are in, in times of crisis, when they're fighting for their life, when they're surviving. Okay? So here, uh, uh, the background is that uh, according to verse 1, okay, uh, Ahab told Jezebel that he already killed all the prophets. Okay? Can you imagine that? All the prophets, excluding one, that is Elijah. Okay? So he have killed all, all of them through, uh, through a sword. And, you know, uh, Jezebel is wanting Elijah to be killed as well. So if you are, you know, if you are told by a very powerful woman that uh, she will kill you, okay, tomorrow, you only have one day to survive. What will you do? How will you respond? No? When life crisis is really, you know, uh, pressuring us. So today, let's observe, okay? What are the human, like Elijah, he was a human being like us, you know? Though he's a man of God, but he's also, you know, has this... Uh, uh, weakness no? in times of, of crisis. So the first 
response no? of a human person, of a human being in times of crisis is this. Okay? Verse 3. There, then he was afraid. Okay? Fear is the normal, you know, way to respond in crisis. He arose and ran for his life. Can you imagine that? Because of fear, he ran away. You know? He ran. I believe no, some of us are also experiencing this kind of fear. Fear for a life. Fear that, you know, because of pandemic will be affected. Fear, fear of so many things in life. And because of our fear, we don't know what to do now. We just, you know, run. Means we want to hide. You know? Because of fear, we want to hide ourselves. We don't want to face the outside world. I, I believe many people until today, they are afraid to go out. They just want to hide and they just want to run to a place where there is no virus or where there is no infection. But it's hard to find a place like that right now. So Elijah ran and ran and ran for his life. Okay? Even he made a strategy, you know. He went to Beersheba and you know, with his servant, but he left his servant in Beersheba and went another day to, you know, to, to, to the wilderness. Wilderness is a place there's no people, there's no community, there's none. It's a wilderness. Why? Just to protect himself. No? So he ran and ran and ran until he came to the wilderness. And he was so tired, you know, when you're, when you're afraid, Oh, and when you keep on running for your life, hiding, you will have a time in your life that you will be tired. And he sat down under a broom tree. And you know what he said? Another, another you know, observation that we can, uh, we can observe here, how people res respond to crisis. And he, and he asked, Okay, listen. And he asked that he might die. <laughs> you know, it's like telling God, Lord, allow me to die right now. I can't take this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I don't have strength to move forward. Let me die here. Okay? And saying it is enough. Enough is enough. I'm done. I want to die now. This is a picture of giving up. Not just giving up of material things, giving up of, of people, but giving up to live. Giving up not to live, but to die. I'm done, he said, you know. This is a very desperate, you know, move or action for a person who is under, under constant fear. You know, last time I told you that when you're under constant fear, there are many things will come into your mind. You will be tired physically. You will be emotionally, you know, weak. And suicide is is a normal, you know, is a normal thing to to do. And he said, "Let me die. Allow me, Lord, to die here." Okay. And it's sad, no, that people give up and they commit suicide and they die. Why? Because they can't handle it anymore. The crisis of their life is so, so hard to handle. No? And, you know, and what happened after this? Another effect of constant fear, giving up is fatigue you know? you're so tired that you can't move on verse 5 and he lay down and slept under a broom tree and many people right now are just you know because they don't want to go out they don't want to do some to do something they're giving up they're so afraid they just lay down and sleep the whole day 
Any people today, they don't want to go out. They just sleep. <laughs> they just stay at their house and sleep the whole day. Why? Because that's the human way to respond to life crisis. And he lay down and sleep under a broom tree. Okay? So, again, let me review some of, of human responses like Elijah in facing the crisis in life. First, he was afraid. He's living in fear and fear controls his life. And because of that fear, he ran away, he ran away. He was afraid that he hide and he keeps on hiding until he was so tired, okay, running. And he what? He asked God to allow him to die. He want to die. He want to commit suicide. No? He want to give up. Okay? Lord, I'm done. Okay? And because of that, he was so tired, discouraged, depressed, afraid, he slept. He lay down and sleep, and he, he doesn't want to move until God do something. You know, sometimes in, in life crisis, when you're about to give up, when you're about to commit suicide, when you're about, you know, to to let go of everything and just allow yourself to die. And you sleep and you don't want to wake up. Here's God coming to the rescue. I want you to observe, you know, how did God minister to Elijah? And how God can minister to us as well in times of depression, distress, discouragement, you know, at times that we want to give up and in the times that we don't want to live anymore. There are three ways that God can minister to us. In this story, we can observe three things that God did you know, to, you know, to encourage Elijah, to minister to Elijah, to help Elijah survive, to help Elijah move forward in his situation. Number one, so while he was sleeping under a tree, behold an angel, verse 5, an angel of the Lord touched him. Can you imagine that? Okay. Elijah, wake up. I don't know what's the word, no? but the angel touched him and said, arise and eat. You know, bangon in Tagalog, bangon at kumain. <laughs> Arise in it because sometimes, you know, when you're physically down, when you're psychologically down, when you are, you know, spiritually down and everything is down, you know, our tendency is to just sleep and we don't want to wake up. And the problem is this. When you are hungry, your mind is also having a lot of stress. You will become mentally ill. You know, and I think the best way to move forward for, for Elijah is that he needs to wake up and eat. Means you need to be physically well. Now, if you are hungry all the day for the next three to five days, you will have, you will really, you know, back down. And one of the effects is mental disorder. Your mind will not function well. That's why, you know, God is good. He told Elijah, arise in it. The best way to help a person in their times of distress, discouragement, okay, depression, and you know, is to help them eat. Help them recover physically. You know, help their physical fitness. They need to rise up and walk and jog and you know and do exercise and eat properly so that they're their body, their whole system, their immune system, their brain, their whole being will be rich, will be recharged. Because if they stop eating, I'm sure their mind will be affected. Their actions, their emotions, their mental, physical, psychological, emotional, even spiritual will be affected. So if you are having the same experience right now, you are just laying down. Sleeping all the day, please, I tell you, the angel is telling you as well, arise 
and it <laughs> arise in it. So he touched Elijah, you know, bangun, wake up in it. Okay. And Elijah obeyed. He looked and behold, there was, it was a head a in his head, a cake baked on, on the hot stones in a jar of water and ate and drank and laid down again. This is another problem. You know? He already ate, he already drank, but he went back and lay down again and sleep. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, people just, they, they cannot really, you know, help themselves but to just lay down and sleep. But the, the Lord is good. You know, in verse 7, And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched Elijah and what? Encourage him to arise in it. But there's an additional word here. For the journey is too great for you. Wow, I like this one. You know, sometimes the crisis will take long. Sometimes it's one week. Sometimes it's one month. Sometimes it takes years. And pandemic is already eight to nine months, right? Since March or January. The journey is great for you. Means it will be a long journey of suffering of crisis of problems of pandemic so you need to be physically well the best way to overcome depression discouragement and other stress is to make yourself physically healthy you need to eat well drink well and you know do physical exercise and he rose and ate and drunk and went in strength wow of that food okay take note okay when you have a good meal you drink you know the 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 minerals that you need the vitamins that you need you will gain strength of the food and it was for 40 days and 40 nights to uh, 40 nights to horeb the mount of god i like this one you know he was able to physically recover from, you know, uh, all those fear, discouragement, uh, you know, and depression and other things. That he was able to move forward for the next 40 days to going to the Mount of God called Horeb. So again, I tell you, you know, it's the same thing. If you are in crisis right now, you are in depression, you are in discouragement, distress, help yourself. Eat well. Drink well. Go for a jog or an, go for an exercise. Help yourself. Because, you know, that's what God wanted us to do. Now, he moved forward and he came. Uh, there he came to a cave and lodged in it. Again, wh wh why there's a constant, you know, hiding here? Cave and lodged in it. No? Because of fear, Elijah wanted to hide. That's his way to, to you know, that's his way to, to cope up. In life, in, in life crisis, there are only two ways human respond either you fight or you flight okay and if you are afraid you will always go to the right side that is flight okay and if you are have that courage you will fight okay but here there's a constant fear that consumed elijah that's why he is in the flight mode he's in the afraid mode okay now, because of that situation, the Lord is, again, is so good, no? Before, he, he sent an angel, the angel touched him, encouraged him to rise in it. This time, take note, no? Verse 9, And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said to, to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? <laughs> Why are you here hiding? You know? 
I like this. So I like this another way of God, you know. Uh, this time he sent his word, his words, okay? The word of God. Now, in our life, we need the word of God. If you want to to battle, to fight, you know, uh, your the crisis of your life, pandemic, and all the problems of your life, you need the word of God. You need God's empowerment. You need God's you know, encouragement. You need God's enlightenment. And this time, God sent a word. It, it is in a form of a question. A simple question. Why are you here? Why, what are you doing here? Why are you hiding, Elijah? Why are you sleeping and, you know, just, uh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want to move forward? Sometimes, you know, God's word will encourage us to move forward. So you need to hear the word of God. You need to go to the Bible and you need to hear God's encouragement. So I tell you, you know, the way of God to encourage us, to minister to us is through his word. So find ways to read the Bible. Find ways to listen to God's word. We need that in our time of crisis. And lastly, I would like not only, you know, God sent an angel to touch him, to encourage him to wake up, arise, and eat. And God sent his word, but the last one, okay? How can God minister to us in times of crisis? And uh, verse 11. And he said, go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by in a great strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. Now listen to the last statement. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper, a low voice, a whisper, you know. Now, there's a big contrast here between an earthquake, a big wave, a wind, you know, and a whisper. And verse 13, and when Elijah heard God in a whisper, he wrapped himself, his face and cloak, and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, Again, what are you doing here, Elijah? Why you're hiding? Why you're living in a constant fear? Why you don't want to move forward? And God ministered to Elijah through a whisper. In that small voice. Now sometimes as we close, no? as I close, sometimes the, the best help that we can get is the simple whisper from God. What's the whisper? What are you doing here? Why are you sleeping? Why are you, you know, not moving on? Why are you afraid? Why are you discouraged? What are you doing? Go out. No? Go out. Move out. Eat well. Okay? And I'm here to help you. I think in this time of crisis, God wanted us to listen to him in his small voice. He's reminding us that, yes, pandemic is real. You know, yes, Elijah is about to be killed by, by, by you know, by a most powerful uh, woman, Jezebel. It's a reality. But God is also a real person who can help us. Who can help us overcome all the crises in this world, all the problems. He is willing to help us. He is willing to assist us if we call it and if we ask for help. So I tell you now, God can minister to you. So please, come out. Go out. Move forward. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Don't be depressed. God is here willing to help us.
Okay? May the angel of God send to you. He may send him to you so that he can touch you and uh, that you will arise and eat. May his word, the Bible, will minister to us and may he talk to us through his whisper, to a low or a small voice that we need. What are you doing? Why are you here? I pray that let's continue to move forward, whatever situation we have right now, and let us uh, join God. Let us ask God to help us in this time of crisis. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for reminding us today of your goodness, of your love and mercy in our lives. Bless us, Lord, as we face this pandemic. Uh, remind us of your word. Touch us, Lord. And even whisper to us so that we can uh, move forward in facing the crisis of our life. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless everyone. See you all again next time.